So please excuse me if I feel a little nervous. I've never done this before. It's kind of strange to be like talking to yourself and looking at yourself on the screen. So hi everyone. My name is Amy and welcome to Amy's Knit Lab. This is my first episode, official episode of my YouTube channel. Um, you probably have already visited my YouTube channel if you are following along my conversations with designers, which I've been doing um, for my new book, Neons and Neutrals. But this is a different format. Amy's Knit Lab is just going to be a sort of a video blog of me telling you like what I've been working on. Um, so please excuse me if I feel a little nervous. I've never done this before. It's kind of strange to be like talking to yourself and looking at yourself on the screen. So. I'll get used to it. You'll probably see me like looking over to the side because I've got some notes and stuff on this other screen here. So anyways, so welcome to my channel. Um, I just wanted to like kind of share a little bit about what I've been working on lately. Um, I released a new pattern called Le Bandana last month. I'm wearing a new version here that we've made in <clears throat> La Bienemie Felix. One strand of Love Me Me Felix and one strand of Fua Fua from Moon Drake. We held them double together and it makes this like, I can't even tell you, super beautiful, soft fabric that is just a pleasure to wear around your neck. Um, the reason why I made this design is because I wear a lot of bandanas around my neck, um, especially like if I'm riding my bicycle or traveling, I find that it's a really great um, project to have on the go as well. Um, I love knitting socks. I've just recently tried to knit hats, which I didn't really get into, but knitting these bandanas have been really fun because I can really explore different shapes and colors with this um, canvas of the bandana. So I will be releasing some newer, some additional patterns for La Bandana very soon. So you guys can stay tuned for that. I'm talking about all of kind of my design adventures that I'm going on right now on my Instagram called Amy's Knit Lab. You guys can follow me there if you'd like to see more. Um, let me just show you a few things that I've been working on. I've been swatching, um, I've been swatching this new yarn. This is our new version of confetti that will be coming out starting this fall. So this is a really beautiful blend of Shetland fibers with some, um, super fine merino and we've made a very light blend of neon speckles to go into this and i have kind of made these swatches because i'm working on a sweater design um something fun where you can learn a lot of techniques while you're knitting it it's going to be um a sweater in pieces and we're going to have a lot of fun with the seaming um we're going to have a little bit of intarsia in there and it's just going to be mostly rows and rows of relaxing stockinette stitch um, I'm also thinking about doing another version like this. This is where I'm holding a strand of Cory Worsted and a strand of Felix together to make this really beautiful marled fabric that I'm quite obsessed with. Um, the color that I used here is Buzz on Felix and I'm using French Gray on Cory Worsted. I love how this is coming out. So look for that this fall a little bit more. Maybe my first sweater design will be coming out. Um, other than that, I've just been working on some projects with some new yarns that we've been releasing. Um, I'm going to take this off because it's a little bit warm to be wearing this in my office. Um, we have some, we have a new base called Sport Nouveau that came out um, just recently and we soft launched that and we're super excited to fully launch that this fall. This is a new sport weight that's 300 meters for 100 grams and it's very plump and really lovely to knit with non-super wash super fine merino as you can see back behind me on my wall here you can kind of see the colors that we're dying on those bases there um, very excited to release this base um, another base that i'm going to tell you guys about here first is our new cashmere wool base called volute that we're going to be releasing later this fall as well this is the color sea glass this is a really beautiful blend of 50% cashmere and 50% wool. I don't know if you can see very closely here on of the twist. It has a really beautiful twist. Um, I've become quite obsessed with this kind of twist where there's a core and then it holds the fuzzy yarn together. So this has got a pure wool core with the brushed cashmere coming off of it. Um, these skeins are 50 grams and you'll get 250 meters of yarn. I recommend using like a 3.75 millimeter needle 
for knitting with this and I'm going to be casting on these two colors to make myself a bandana this summer so I can show you how this knits up. Um, very, very excited for this base to be coming out this fall. It's called Volute. So before I continue on, I have a special guest today for my first episode. I've invited my friend and my knitting mentor, Nancy Marchant, to come join me. Oh, Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Surprise. See? Oh, that's so cute. I love your bandana. Yeah. So we are also, I just wanted to say that we're trying out a new software called StreamYard for these chats and it's really fun. And we're, this is our first maiden voyage. So we're using Nancy as our guinea pig and trying <laughs> things out. So there might be a little, little hiccups and things like that, but there is somebody behind the curtain who's helping us. It's our friend, Julia, who works with me here at La May. You want to pop in? There she is. <laughs> Hi, yeah. <laughs> She's going to be my tech person today while we try this out, this new format of um, filming on StreamYard for YouTube. So thanks, Julia, for being there. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> hi, Nancy. Hi, hi, Amy. Hi, How Nancy. are you doing? I'm, I'm doing just fine. We have a cold day here in the Netherlands, so uh, I can wear What my does that mean, a cold day? Like, what's the temperature like? Uh, it's like uh, 18, uh, it's less, it's, yeah, it's less, it's about 65, maybe 65. Okay. Yeah. It's raining. It's raining. And it's windy. Yes. And where I live, it's always windy. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I experienced some of the crazy wind when I was in Amsterdam a couple weeks ago. It was really crazy windy one night when we were there. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well, I think we're experiencing about the same weather. It's quite mild here in Paris, too. Like, I need a little bandana to wear around my neck when I'm riding around on my bicycle outside. It's a little, just a little too cold to be out without something. So, yeah. So, would you show us your bandana? Because Nancy did some fun techniques in hers. Well, you know, I had, um, let me, I had a whole lot of, you know, single skeins of Felix and he Felix and Helix. And so I had like three grays. So I combined gray A and B, then B and C, and then C and A to make uh. these, these stripes. And so I, I figured out how many rows, because I think you say in the pattern how many rows it takes to get down to the point. Yeah. And I divided that by, I don't know, whatever, to get these triangles. And so then I just added a triangle uh, all the way across. I love it. Yeah. And did you use all like leftovers for the triangle? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, they're all, it's two, these are all two, th no, these, these are two threads held together. This is a boucle. This is your boucle. This is a uh, two threads there. These are all two threads held together, except for the boucle oh. all the way through. Cause the boucle of course is a little thicker. Yes, it is. Need to hold it, it, together, so. it takes the space. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Yeah, I love no, it so really much. Sweetie. And I, you know, these little scarves, uh, I know that they're becoming very popular, but man, I wear them all the time. I, you know, it's the old lady thing. My, my grandmother used to always say, oh, there's a draft on my neck. And, you know, as a kid, you roll your eyes like, oh, grandma. But now I'm a grandma now, so I can have a draft on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a grandma and I believe in the draft. I think it's a real thing. In France, they actually talk about it. It's called the courant d'air. And it's like a thing like you can't have a courant d'air happening I have to tell you during COVID, it was really hard. Like when we would hang out with family, we tried to social distance, but then they didn't want to open the window. I remember. And I was like, they were like afraid of the, the draft coming in. Oh. Like, we need to air out this room. There's yeah, no ventilation here, you know? Um, it's so funny, but yeah, the, the draft is a real thing in France. It's like um, it's built into their culture. The women wear scarves because they don't want to get the draft on their neck. And so well, that's why the French women are so chic with their and elegant too. So yes, they have yeah. their elegant style of you know wearing the scarves. And I I have I have learned yeah the way. Let's see if I can get this tight quickly <laughs> because this is like mirror, so it's hard. But yeah, it's really fun. And I feel like this is like the perfect little accessory to have. I have it in my bag. Yeah. You know, when you're traveling on the plane, I'm always cold on the airplane. And so when I put this on and I immediately feel I feel better. I feel warmer. Yeah. 
No, you so. wrap something around your neck and you are warmer. And, you know, everybody, yeah. or a lot of people work in air conditioning. So it's, it's a perfect little, perfect little scarf. Perfect little accessory. So I wanted to bring you on to my first um, episode of Knit Lab because I know you've been working on some crazy beautiful stuff lately, Nancy, yeah. especially, I mean, all of this woven knitting and anyone who follows Nancy has seen where she's been going with this. And every time you post something new, it just, it's so exciting to see. Um, would you tell us a little bit about, so you've just released a new book. It's yeah. your woven knitting ebook. Yeah. But how did that come to be? Well, you know, I would say even a couple of years ago, you and I started talking because of the worsted yarn. You were introducing worsted yarn and you were sending it out to designers to play with. And I was at, uh, an abyss in my knitting or, you know, I, you come to this point, if you, if you've been knitting all your life, you know, you, you kind of done everything. And, you know, that was the same with brioche. When I hit brioche, it's, I was at this point where I'm like, what am I going to do? And I've kind of, I was kind of done with brioche. I've kind of been done with brioche for years. And so I've been playing around, you know, I've always liked color. I've always liked intarsia. I mean, and in 2001, I made a sweater for Knitter's Magazine that was a woven, you know, it, it, it's actually the exact same sort of woven pattern. It was in different colors. And I think that throughout my career, I've always had uh, textile images on the things that I make. And so I'm going to show you, this is a, this is a little jacket from uh, when I was in graduate school. You know, this is a, a little shibori jacket and you it's, you know, it's a woven image. And so, you know, what this is, this is shibori is where you, it's a Japanese tie dye technique where you stitch, you know, along the line and then you gather up those stitches mm. and because you dye this in indigo, then uh, you get a very distinct, very graphic image always. And then the inside was done with uh, a technique that's called bumaki where you, uh, you have a, a, a sewage pipe, you know, those PVC pipes. You make the fabric so that it fits real tight around it, then you crunch the fabric together. And so the outside of the fabric gets very dark blue, the inside gets lesser blue. So you just, it's a very easy way to create this beautiful patterning. But it's more, these textile images have always been part of my, it's always been my inspiration, let's put it that way. Yeah. So you and I are talking and I'm making samples with this Cory Worst. And I'm going to show you some of the samples that I made. You know, I made a sample like this. And um, I, I started just playing with lines. And basically what this is, this is just, it's like little um, Bavarian traveling stitches. And what I did was I just made them in color. You know, like this, you can see... You've probably seen, you know, this kind of stitch, mm -hmm. but it's always been in one color. So I started making them in two colors. And then I, uh, I mean, I made quite a few. And then I just thickened the line and made it the cables, you know, colored cables. And that's where uh, you and I decided that I would make the canal poncho. Yes. You know, and I, yeah, I've got mine here too. So, I mean, I made the... The canal poncho, yes, we both have it. And, you know, I, I decided just to put the front panel because if you have it all over, it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, so, and it's it's a fun, it's a fun knit. I mean, it's not, you know, people are so intimidated the minute you start saying words like intarsia. I know. And, I mean, okay, it's it's a little tedious. It's not, it's all knits and pearls. It's, yes. You know, there's nothing beyond that. It's just that you've got these knits of pearls in different colors. So you have to have bobbins or strings hanging there and it gets a little tangled, but okay. Don't we all like to untangle stuff or, you know, but okay, maybe not. But not everyone. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And then I made this sweater as well with the leftovers or whatever that you had sent me. You sent me 30 skeins of yarn. Well, we were at the time developing all the colors for Corey Worsted. And so as they were coming out of the dye pots and we were in the pandemic and yeah. I just was like, here, Nancy, I'm going to send you some more colors we just made. <laughs> well, it was a great gift because it really sparked me, it sparked my interest into 
developing these kinds of little patterns. Uh, and I mean, I think because of making these colored cables, and you can imagine all of these cable patterns that there are in the world. I mean, there are tons. You can imagine just making them in color. And if you want to try something like that, you know, you can take a, a photograph and try to make it black and white. You know, if you can do that on your computer, or whatever, and then just color in. Yeah. You can watch how these, you know, a lot of these see like this, the pink cable travels up and across and up Love and it. back and you know, your eye and your eye really follows the cable when it's in color like this. And then because of that, I started then thinking about woven, 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 the woven image, let's put it that way. And um, I made this, uh, this sweater, which is kind of the, the star of, whoops, the woven knitting, whoops, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the the star of the woven knitted uh, book ebook, yeah. and I mean I put one size in the book because I do believe you know if you want to play with this you're going to use lots of different yarns, lots of different colors, and by me giving you a specific gauge, a specific sweater, you would be required to buy twenty different colors of some yarn mm. or have it. And so I thought I'm giving one size and this is just a boxy sweater. It's very, very, very wide. You can mm -hmm. see this is, this is how big I am. And that's, that's how wide I made it. But uh, I've made you a sweater like this or two, you know, yeah, or, or definitely. A wide boxy sweater. And what I do is I cut off the, at the, when it gets to the middle of the arm and I cut this off to uh, get rid of all the excess that would hang if I didn't cut it off. And then I cut across the shoulder sharply to, for a better fit, you could put it's it. It's such there. a great fit, that sloping shoulder. Yeah. And I have sloping shoulders, so it just like I too. It takes away that extra fabric if it was just a boxy sweater and went straight across. I yeah, no, if, you, if it's just a box, you're going to have that excess fabric. Yeah, for sure. So we have this sample oh, yeah. that you sent me that's got that same shape yeah. and I love it. I love this. This is, this is Vleck yeah. that Nancy did in um, our confetti yarn with, which features her vintage stash. <laughs> <laughs> All my old yarn. Troop. But it's so beautiful. Like, I don't know. It's like you won't even be able to see on camera the depth of shade yeah. of the colors and all of the little bits and pieces of your stash that came into this project. Yeah. But yeah, and then you made this design with the same shoulder slope here. I love it. I think I might borrow it for a sweater design sometime. Oh, it's, it's it, just a, it's just so a great well. shape. You know, it's, it's a yeah. really good shape. And for that sweater, I did size it. I mean, I have 11 sizes or something. Yes, like yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about the technique of intarge that you used here as well. Yeah, for that, for that sweater, you, what you see there is it has a one color woven background. You know, there's, and um, I'll get to what I, what I mean by that. It has a one color woven background. So I just put splashes, more or less, of another color on top of it. It happens to be that your, your peach sweater color mm -hmm. looks like the, the color is bleached out. I mean, yeah, look right here. You think that this is just bleached out, but it's not. It's an it's a set in intarsia color, and so what you do, you know, you you knit across with your main background color until you get to where you want to make a splash, and then you pick up that peach color. You knit across three or four stitches or ten stitches, whatever. Then you have a second ball of the background that you pick up and you go across. Sometimes you might have five balls of yarn there. You know, where you have two splashes because you have a, a background, a splash, a background, splash, a background. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that that can get a little bit tangled, but it, it doesn't have to be. I know back in the day, in the 90s, 80s and 90s, when people were doing tons of intarsia, what they did was they just made lengths. You know, Kay Facet, that's his, he just makes, you know, five, five meter lengths or five arm lengths. And he just hangs that on the back which means that you can, you can pull it out, you can untangle it pretty easily. Yeah. When you run out of that, let's say that was a yellow color, he would just pick up another yellow yarn and make 
five of those. And until when that war was that when that one was gone, he picked out maybe an orange, you know, I mean, he really mixed colors that way. Yeah. And I used bobbins. And uh, I'll show you, I have one. You yeah. use a specific kind of bobbin though. Yeah, I, I, these, oh dear, picked up the wrong thing. Oh no, that doesn't, I'm carrying along, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I'm all tangled. Okay, well, <laughs> this is what happens with intarsia. Yeah, what you see here is, see these bobbins? Mm. These are little, um, you can see it's like a little square with a little top and a bottom. Yeah. The reason I like these bobbins is they're very lightweight and they can hold up to like 12 meters, which is a lot. Yeah. Okay. So to work this sort of process, uh, what you have is you have warp threads and you have weft threads, just like on a loom, you know, and you have a background. Yes. And so you, ha you basically always have three colors, but you're always only using two colors sort of at a time. Well, kind of. Okay, but what you do is you, you work across, like you would work a background color, whoops, a background color, and then you would pick up this bobbin and knit those three stitches with that bobbin. You would carry the background color across and knit a stitch. Pick up this bobbin and knit your three stitches carry the background color across and yeah. work those stitches. So you're, you're stranded knitting, but these are like intarsia because yes. they each have their own. If you don't do that, you have a flat surface. You know, I could strand this blue across as well, but then I, I'd get to an area here where I'd have to strand it all the way across, which mm -hmm. would also be not so nice. But I mean, because within this one column you are knitting back and forth back and forth back and forth you're making like you know an eye cord in a way you're you know when you do stockinette stitch it wants to curl at yeah. the sides and that's what this is doing then and then we make this in uh purl stitches reverse stockinette and we make these in stockinette and revert our purl wants to come forward when it's vertical it yeah. wants to jump back when it's horizontal, you know, so you're, you get so much texture. By, you can see uh, it on the screen. You can see how those, um, those green and purple are just popping right up off of that background. Up and then they, you know, then the, the weft comes along and goes over on top of them, which is really nice. Yeah. So okay. in your, in your ebook, yeah. Um, do you explain to us a little bit about the basics of weaving, like just the idea? Because you just used two terms that maybe not everyone's familiar yeah. with. Like, obviously, I I didn't know any weaving terms until we started nerding out about ace and jig fabrics, and you were talking to me about warping and wefting. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I I mean, I it's it's just a very general explanation of there's a warp and there's a weft, and there's a background for these for this very first book. There's a background. And then you, um, I, should we look at the book? Yeah, sure. If you, if you want to show us the book, that would be great. Okay. I would be curious to see just before you show, can you show us an example of, of the weaving without a background? Sure. Uh, this is a good one. Oops. Oh. This that doesn't one. have a background. So what that means, this is sort this is a different technique completely. Well, not completely. It's a different technique in that each one of these vertical threads has a bobbin. Okay. So you don't have the space, you don't have the background space in between where you are carrying that background color across. Across every back. time you work this, you have nothing but warp and weft. Okay. Yeah. This is another ebook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, so this ebook does not feature that. All right. No, 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 because it's it's just it's it's different enough that uh, this ebook is just tabby weaves, which means that the warp and weft go under one over one. It's okay. the most common weave, and so uh, you have a warp and a weft, and you have a background. That uh, okay, and maybe if I show you the the book. 
Yeah. You know, again, th this is the first time we're doing this. So yeah. So we we figured out that Nancy's going to share with us, but she has to like be in InDesign in her like original document. So you're going to see. <laughs> She's going to yeah. share with us. Okay. Um, we're going to see if this works. There we go. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So this is the cover. Okay, and then this uh, this is the intro page or whatever, and then this is the index. I mean, it's I've, do, I've sort of made photography this... for your book. Well, I did the photography, and I mean, I'm not a great photographer, so um, looks good. Well, it's very kind of old school, which I kind of like. But this is an introduction of where you can see these are different things that I've made in my life, and this uh, sweater right in the middle. You can see that that's mm -hmm. very similar to the one that's in this book. Okay, so here I talk about tabby weaves, and there's okay. an example down there in the bottom. And okay. then I talk about this, the warp threads going up and down, the weft threads going across, and then a background, and then the finished product, more or less. And I talk about bobbins, and then this is an example of a one color tabby weave with the background. Mm -hmm. And then this is the sample that you make. And this is just to get you used to the technique of having these bobbins, having the warp threads going up and down and having the weft threads go across. And then you can use this, if you use the yarns that you wanna make for the, that you wanna use for the pullover, this is your sample you've created. This is the pullover that you've seen. And then what I did for the pattern is, you can see uh, these are the measurements, the finished, the measurements of the pullover. And then uh, this just sort of shows you kind of how it's made. And then this is how, this is the construction in a schematic. Mm -hmm. Cause this is how I always design things. I draw a, a schematic and you can see here, you cast on, you know, so many stitches, you knit straight until you get to the upper arm sloping. Then you make a drastic decrease. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the shoulders, you make a, a slower decrease. And then I also sort of have written that out. And this is the pattern, the stitch pattern that's used in that. This is the front, the sleeves. Again, this is that's this is the pattern for that sweater. Okay, okay so then I go into other weaves. Wow. For example, this is plaid. Gorgeous. And what I've done for each of these other weaves is I've made a coloring page. So you can print that out and you can color it in. And then I've also just made a big, you can't, let me make this... Um, So you can see it better. See, then you can cut, you can cut, you can print that out. You can make a pattern from this big printout. And I uh, love that. That's so cool. Yeah. And then this is a gingham. Again, it's just a tabby weave, meaning it goes over, over one, under one, over yeah. one, under one. You know, and then these these are the, the coloring page and charts. These are thick threads. Again. Okay, oops, okay, we, those are thick threads. These are thick and thin, you could say, with, you yeah. can see the background here is very small and wide. Um, sorry, the computer's gotta catch up. <laughs> I love that you've made all these coloring pages. This like gives me this urge that I need to like immediately download this color in my own motif and sit down and, yeah. and cast on a swatch. I just wanna yeah. see. Well, you can imagine if you took this pattern right here, this tall and thin, I mean, you can imagine, I mean, you could give each one of these, you know, the, the vertical threads, you could give them a different color or you could make two, 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 you know? Yeah. And, I mean, there's so many possibilities to create your own patterning. This is another pullover. So it's pretty. the same shape. It's the same size, but a, as you see, it's got a big background. Yeah. With just a little bit of, of weaving going on, but it's just to give you an idea of, uh, of, you know, other ways to approach this. Then we get into what's called an unbalanced weave, which means that the threads, the vertical and horizontal threads that are going up and yeah. down and across are different sizes. And uh, I did that just to see what works and what doesn't. Like you can see, if you see my little cursor, mm -hmm. that one bottom row is just one row of color. Yes. And it doesn't work. You have to have two. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little too thin. Mm. It's too thin. It doesn't hold it. And okay, I'll continue. This is then a thick and thin number one, because I had the thick go over the thick. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then you can see it here. It's 
uh, thick and thin number two. And here, the thin goes over the thick. So it's yes. just a little different, but it's just, again, an idea. I, I, that's what I like to throw out there, just an idea of what you can do. And then that's the end. That's awesome. So this ebook is now available like on your website, on Ravelry. Not on my website. <laughs> Or not on your website. Okay. Oh, <laughs> on Ravelry. On Ravelry. It's the only thing, I mean, you know, it's the only, I know everybody else has got a lot of other venues. I just can't, I, you know, I, I'm lucky to get it on Ravelry. So that's where it's, that's where it is. Yeah. That's a great place to go get patterns. I mean, honestly, I still go to Ravelry for my patterns. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's so, that is so exciting. I know because I've been watching your progression of working on these swatches because we talk all the time and you you show me stuff we send each other photos and I'll be like look what I'm working on you like look what I'm working on and my brain's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting that's exciting so does this mean that there will be other woven ebooks coming out later yeah because yeah. that that sample that I showed you with the the little uh, bobbins that's uh that's a a twill weave and what a twill denim is a twill. I have my oh, example. Oh yes, that actually speaks to me exactly now. When you said yeah. it was denim, okay. Yeah. See, this is this is this is probably the first of these weaves that I made. And and what twills do is they create a diagonal. Yes. And that's oh. because you go over one under two, and the next time you go over one under two, you move it over a thread. So you go over the two before and under one and. You know, so you create these di diagonals and there are a gazillion variations of twills. And so uh, I've this next little ebook that I'm going to come out with is going to be twills and um, other weaves, you could say. And then the third one that I'm going to make is going to be this woven without the background. And that's the... That pinky one that I showed you, but that's also this one. Yeah. Yeah. One so special. Yeah. And I mean, this is very special because it is, I mean, this is all your colors in, in yeah. listed. So, and this was just a, it was really a fun knit. I know people think, oh my gosh, that must take you forever. Well, what took forever was this ribbing. <laughs> you know, it's got ribbing there. It's got ri this is double. This is these are all double. It's doubled you know, over. It in, so it's got a nice finish, you know, on the inside. Yeah. It's really, I'll show you the inside because, you know, you do that and you get a nice finished edge, but that took for. Ever, oh. you guys, this is technique is not hard. I took a class with yeah. Nancy last year, and I I sat down and did the swatch with everyone in the class, and I was just like, this is not hard. Um, I took your tech your recommendations, you know, just pull off threads. Yeah. Like I don't do the bobbin thing. I yeah. pull off two arm lengths. Yeah, and then just whatever, and just let it hang yeah. out, and it just made it really easy. So if you guys are curious about trying this technique, I would recommend getting the ebook, downloading and just doing a swatch and just grabbing like four or five of your favorite colors and doing it. What I set up is I'll have to find my swatch. I'll take a picture of it. I had a, a background and then I had, I think I've knit one, two, three, four different yeah. colors. Yeah. And I just, I did the technique from the lesson and it was amazing. And it's really easy to understand. It's all it is is knitting and purling. It's yeah. all, it's really all it is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you have to pay attention to when you knit and purl because the background is in seed stitch. The vertical warp threads are in stockinette, but then yes. they curl up because it just goes little bitty back and forth. And then the stranded uh, weft threads are then done in reverse purl or reverse uh, stockinette. Yeah. And so you have to kind of know those that you keep in mind. And uh, yeah. And also you just have to let go when you're doing intarsia about the tangle, like just... Don't let it get, don't let it bother you. I think that when I, when you told me about cutting off strands instead of doing bobbins, that's when, it, that was a huge game changer for me because I was able to let go of the tangle. And if it started to get tangled, I'll just pull one out yeah. and it would automatically just auto, just like untangle immediately. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so great. So what other techniques would you, what other advice would you give to people who are wanting to start in Tarja? I think that we would like to. Well, I mean, th I think that th what Intarsia opens up for everybody is you can use all different colors together. You can use all different fibers and threads, yeah. you know, it, that all that just gives texture. 
And I mean, you can throw in purl stitches, you can, you know, you can add a texture that way as well. I mean, it's just another added element that, I mean, boom, you can just do so much. You've been doing tons of experimentation with intarsia stripes, you know, you start a stripe and end it, you know, and bring it back. I mean, it's just got, it's very graphic most of the time because, you know, knitting is a little square. It's a little pixel. It's, you know, so it's, it does have sort of a regiment to it. You know, you to get a good curve is, you know, if you want a perfect circle, it's still kind of it's still like a little oval shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you have to kind of squash your chart, you know, so yeah. that it's not the little, it's not a perfect square, it's a squashed. I have made so many intarsia swatches. I'm like actually looking at them right here behind my desk. I can see my like cork board. Um, but this will be another episode. I'll go through some of my swatches yeah. that I've done. I love playing with texture with intarsia, like taking, I, I've recently done some swatches where I take boucle with my confetti yarn with Cory worsted and yeah. just make all these different shapes. And it's so interesting yeah. to play with these different textures and how they play together. Also um, intarsia, doesn't create that extra thickness in the background. So you're not carrying any floats and, yeah. you know, and for me knitting like a sweater with the color work across the bust is hard because I already have a lot of volume here anyways. And then like I have the extra thick knitted fabric. I, I kind of shy away from it. So intarsia has been my, my thing that's on my radar now is like, I want to make color work sweaters doing intarsia. So that'll be coming along the, along the line soon. You know, there, you know, okay. Another thing that you have that people can be very annoyed about are ends. You have to weave in the ends, but you need to teach yourself to weave them in as you go. Yes. You know, when you start a new color, you weave that end in. Yes. And when you end a new color, you can weave it in or you can, I always just wait because I want it to go be woven back into the color that it came from. Yes. You know, or woven down, but you've got all of these elements on the back of a intarsia sweat or sweater or garment whatever where you can weave it in very easily and you just you know let's say you're watching some movie and you don't feel like knitting well you can just weave in the ends that you've absolutely. got absolutely absolutely and it's so easy to weave the end so this was like a little swatch i was just not following a pattern i was just kind of going along and, and this is the beginning of my bandana and you can imagine each of these colors had ends and yeah. I just went in and wove them in as I would go along. I'd stop and just weave them in. Yeah. Um, and I find it super relaxing. But look at this fabric. It's like so flat and thin. No, no, no floats or anything in the background. And if you weave the ends in really well, the backside is just as beautiful as yeah. the front. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to convert everyone to intarsia. <laughs> well, okay. Another thing about intarsia is... In general, it's easiest to do it if you knit back and forth, which means you have a right side and you have a wrong side. And that means if you want to make a sweater, what you said, you're going to make a sweater in pieces, which is what I do. But of course, I'm from the generation where we made everything in pieces. Mm -hmm. So that's my go-to sweater. I like pieces. I like the way they fit. Yeah. And I like the fact that if I'm knitting the front and I need to adjust the shoulder. All I have to do is adjust the shoulder. I don't have to take the whole thing back, front, sleeves, everything out. Yeah. And if it's a slight little, you know, let's say it's too wide. Well, okay, you just make a bigger seam on the yeah. side. And, yeah. you know, there are so many advantages to making things in pieces. That's how they make clothes, you know, and there's a reason. Okay, they make clothes that way. They make T-shirts, which is knitted. They make it in pieces. They don't make it all in one piece. No, no. And um, so, I mean, and uh, when you do your finishing uh, episode, I'll show you some <laughs> hey, ways that, that we'll uh, have you come back and you can like yeah. we can talk about our yeah. finishing techniques. Because I do I finish things a little differently, I think, than most people. So, yeah, I've learned a, a few tips from you, and I do finish differently than a lot of people, too. So this will be a great time to have you back, and we'll talk about finishing. Because that, too, is something to embrace if you're going to knit sweaters in pieces. Yeah. you At some point, you're going to have to sew them together. Um, so my first sweater pattern that I'll probably release will be in pieces, except I'm going to have a little bit of intarsia in the round. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's that's optional. You can opt not to do that. You know, um, I always want to throw in a little extra technique in there just to kind of get the knitters to level up a little bit too, because yeah. I too yeah. am constantly looking for you new need techniques. To challenge yourself. Yeah. I need to challenge myself. And so intarsia was something that I shied away for many years. I've been knitting since I was eight. So it was really when I started working with you on Worsted Book and you did the intarsia cables for the canal poncho that it put intarsia back on my radar again. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was doing all those techniques and practicing while you were working on this. And I remember all the advice you'd give me and I'd go home and try it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it is, it's real. Or for me, it's very important to challenge yourself, constantly yeah. be challenging yourself. And I mean, I still am learning things uh, in knitting. Uh, you know, I still, I, I get an idea and I try it. Sometimes it don't work, you know, yeah. and other times it's like, oh, but if I did that, you know, and you do that and it's like, yes, you know, it works and it's beautiful or maybe not, but you know, uh, I love this. Maybe I should have you back like once a month and be like, what new things did you learn, Nancy? I do want to tell you, I do want to show you something new I learned last week. Um, it's knitting related. And I was going to ask you if you do this too. Do you spin? Not I at all. I am the world's worst spinner. Worst. I, I worked in a, when I was in school, when I was in uh, graduate school, I worked at a store called Straw into Gold and their specialty was spinning. Spinning. <laughs> well, I, they hired me and they said, you know, you're going to be the knitting and dyeing. <laughs> you're not going to be the spinning. You know, I mean, I ordered some spinning wheel specially made and some special wood and all that. And I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I can't, I just can't do this. And I know that it's one of the most relaxing, uh, relaxing hobbies, I guess you could say, to do is spinning. This is so relaxing. Like once I understood the construction of the yarn yeah. by hand spinning, it became super relaxing and it's relaxing in a different way than knitting is. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I can't even explain it. It gives me it, like, I feel like it opens up new headspace in my mind while I'm doing this. It's a and rhythmic, it's so you know, it's a repetitive rhythmic, yes. like jogging, like knitting, whatever you make dopamine and you know, yep. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Any chance you give it another try? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No way. Uh -uh. I'm going to come hang out with you and I'll bring my spindle and I will You spin. can bring your spindle. Uh, I'll watch. I'll knit. <laughs> no way. No way. All right. Everyone heard Nancy say no way, but I'm going to try to convince her. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get together and I'll be like, come on, Nancy, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Well, this was super fun to catch up with you. I have a feeling like what I want to do with my knit lab episodes is like talk about what I'm working on and then maybe have my friends come on and talk about stuff. I love this idea of us exchanging ideas for like finishing tips and things like that. So you guys can count on seeing Nancy here again. You know, we are two American expats living in Europe here. So we like stay in touch, you know, and so it's really nice to, to be able to connect. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all of your wonderful knits with us you guys she has so much more maybe on another episode i'll be like nancy show us some <laughs> what are you well, knitting I'm, right now like what's on your needles right now nancy like what well i have though i'm making some little samples but at the same time i am making a denim sweater so you saw the little denim sample i made well i'm gonna make a denim sweater and you know how jeans have the torn knees or the patches yeah. and so it's kind of combining you know, splashy things. And, oh, I, let me show you this one, this one, because it's kind of like this, except this is, um, this is a, you know, a one color background weave. And then yeah. what I did was I put woven or um, visible mending on top. I saw this sweater on Instagram and it's, oh, it's, out, of, it's out of this world. I love it. <laughs> and oh this, is, you know, people think that I, where is it? People think that I like, patch this on top. No, this is knitted in. <laughs> and while I'm knitting, then I just, I knit these little things in too, you know. So uh, the denim one will be, I mean, I'm going to have like open areas with those threads that come up and stuff like that, you know. So that's, yeah. I'm still thinking about how I, how I'm going to do all this. Yeah. I'm imagining like a whole like visible mending collection. Like you could oh, make yeah. like. Well, 
I've got an elbow patch. <gasps> and I have uh, another patch on top, you see. And this was just, you know, knitted plain, just that plain rectangle in there. And then I embroidered on top of it. Oh, how fun. And I think, I mean, this is a little bit different visible mending. And then, uh, oh, yeah, the neck. Well, you'll like that because it's, see how the neck is. Oh, I love that. Yeah, see, you've got. You know, oh, cute. Neck. Yeah. And then we, of course, got at the at the bottom, you know, because the frayed edges. Of course, because you always fray your, your the cuffs of your, yes, at the bottom of the sweater, too. Perfect. It's exactly, <laughs> yay. I love that. Love that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, Nancy, it's almost the end of the week, so I got to go. <laughs> got to go and finish my week here at the Atelier. I'll well, let you get back yes. to your knitting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Amy. And yeah. we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk again. I'm sure, for sure. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining Amy's Knit Lab. This is episode one. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I will add notes and everything down below on things. If there's any questions that you have, please pop it into the comments and Julia and I will try to respond. Um, Julia, you want to pop back on and say bye? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's ask Julia really quick. What are you knitting right now, Julia? Oh, I don't think I've brought anything. Mm -hmm. I'm knitting my uh, purple coke sweater in silk tweed and mohair. I've done 20 centimeters under the arms, so oh, I'm like good. two thirds of the way through. I just need like a little bit more knitting time. I think it's going to be my train knitting for the summer break and it's going to be done really soon. So I'm just, I'm so obsessed with it. I've never knit with silk, like Ooh. pure silk before. Yeah. And it, it feels really different, but really, um, I don't know. It has this great organic feel kind of, yep. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying it. Well, episode two will feature Julia and I because we're going to film this after our summer break and we're going to catch up on what we've been knitting or spinning. Okay, so my spinning happened because of Julia. <laughs> hey. they, they got me. They all three I've been of them working on it for about a year. <laughs> It's done. I, I, I just want to say I understand now. I understand now why it's so awesome. So I think for, for me, the super fun thing about it is just having to learn something completely new from scratch. Yes. It's like that's the part I so loved about starting knitting. And now you get to learn a whole new technique or a whole new hobby um and everything is new and you know well, it helps you understand how those yarns are created too. absolutely you know, absolutely ply or how it's plied and how it's yes. spun all of those things make a difference so yes yeah. absolutely um and you can also do it um in a pretty simple way as well i'm not a very technical you know, person or a technical knitter or spinner. So I don't know very much about it. And you don't need to know a whole lot to start making pretty yarn, you know, yeah. um, which that is That was a misconception fun. that I had. I was intimidated by the wheel. I was like, oh, I have to learn to spin. I'm going to have to learn to manipulate the wheel. And that's kind of my, was my first initiation to spinning. This though is a complete game changer. I am obsessed with this kind of spinning and you guys are going to see more of this. Um, That's called this fiber awesome. that I made. I made this with Arcara mm -hmm. yarns when I was in Montreal two years ago. But you guys, I'm already thinking about Rhinebeck. <laughs> You're going to spin the yarn and make a sweater? Oh, I don't know if I will spin enough to make a sweater, but I definitely want to do hand spun socks because Julia has been talking about this and some accessories. But like for me, I'm mostly in the in the moment it's for me it's the spinning like i know that i want to produce um last weekend how much did i spin i didn't even know it was like 90 meters in two days which i don't know if that's a lot or not but like the girls when i brought my spindle in they're like this is way too heavy Why are you <laughs> there was too much yarn on this <laughs> and i just kept going and going and going so i didn't know so for me it's just the action it's just the it's just this gesture of spinning that is so 
incredibly relaxing for me so and it's really intuitive as well i i feel like because i just watched a couple youtube videos or you know i didn't read very much about it i just tried it and figured out you know what i like what i don't like and you know just 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 do it you yeah, know just do it nancy i'm gonna come i'm gonna come visit maybe we'll i'll just make you do it <laughs> <laughs> nancy's like no do you crochet? I'll teach you to crochet. I know how to crochet. We can crochet together. I would love that. I would love that, actually. That would be fun. Okay. Maybe some crochet content will be coming up here soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. And we'll be back soon with episode two. Bye.